Okay, so let's get started. What's flipped learning? That is the first question that we are going to answer right here, right now. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a historical background about flipped learning. It started out in the 2000s being the inverted classroom. Um, Bergman and Sams constantly cite Leitch, Platt, and Treglia, and other authors have cited Baker as the beginners of this um, phenomenon or this pedagogical approach. In the inverted classroom, um, everything was pretty much what it was in the flipped classroom. It was lectures versus homework. So lectures were pre-recorded or materials were given to students in the form of teaching guides. And then, you know, the classroom was used to be a more active uh, space where more guidance and more activities occurred. Then, in 2012, 12 years after, Bergman and Sams coined the term flipped classroom. They are two chemistry teachers who started out in Woodland Park uh, High School in Colorado. And what they did was they flipped chemistry and they flipped their chemistry classes just because some students were not showing up to class. So in the interest of providing students with the materials for the course, they started pre-recording lectures. Um, chemistry is a little easier uh, for lectures, you know, because of course they are more lectures in that, in that field. Not so much in language learning, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, so they coined the term flipped classroom, which referred to uh, inverting the space um, and the time, you know, just watching the pre-recorded lectures at home and then doing some activities, which were mostly labs uh, in the classroom with the assistance of the teacher. Then in 2014, the flipped learning network uh, Changed the name a little bit. It's not the flipped classroom anymore, but flipped learning and the flipped learning network, which is formed by educators not only in the area of chemistry, and Bergman and Sams do make part of the learning, uh, the flipped learning network, but there are other educators in other areas. Um, they came up with a definition that we are going to see later. And, and this definition is the one that we are abiding by um, up to this point. So initially the flipped classroom, as I mentioned before, was an inversion of, you know, students preparing um, activities in at, at home, the students preparing for class at home in the form of videos, then in the classroom applying some concepts with feedback from the teacher, and then after students checking their understanding and extending their learning as it would be done in a regular blended classroom. The flipped learning uh, network proposed the following definition that I would like us to think about for a moment. So flipped learning is a pedagogical approach in which direct instruction moves from the group learning space to the individual learning space, and the resulting group space is transformed into a dynamic, interactive learning environment where the educator guides students as they apply concepts and engage creatively in the subject matter. So there are some key words that are worth analyzing here. Uh, the first keyword is well flipped learning. Then it's a pedagogical approach. This is not a fad. This is not a trend. This is something that is here to stay and to alter the way we teach and the way our students learn. Uh, in which direct instruction moves from the group learning space, that means the students and the teacher, to the individual learning space, where the individual is by him or herself. However, it doesn't mean that teachers cannot be with students. Um, this can happen in the form of videos, and we can add interactivity to the video so that students don't feel alone, and we can also add accountability to the video so that students feel compelled to watch. Okay. So the resulting group space, now that we have some additional extra time, that's uh, Bergman and Sam's question, what do I do with my face-to-face -face time, is transformed into a dynamic, interactive learning environment. So it is not anymore a teacher in front explaining, you know, the concepts, but it's actually students working together, students um, constructing knowledge, interacting with each other.
Um, educator guides students, so this is important. The, um, the help of the teacher is crucial. This is in no way uh, pretending to replace any teacher or just change the teacher for videos. No, we just need the guidance of the teacher in the classroom to exert different roles and to help students in different ways. As they apply concepts um, and engage creatively in the subject matter. So it's not any more passive listening of the teacher, but it's actually application and engagement to its full extent. The flipped learning network uh, proposed also four pillars of flipped uh, learning. So these are called a flip. It starts with flexible environment, um, which refers to the place uh, and the environment of learning. So do we have to make changes in chairs? Do we have to sit students in small tables? Do we have to have the rows, the rows in the classroom? These are the questions we have to ask in order to flexibilize our environment. Then also we are asking about the learning culture. The second uh, pillar of flipped learning refers to the culture that we build in our classroom. Is it a culture of learning? Is it a culture of asking questions, of creatively um, engaging with the content, of producing all together? Is it a learning culture or is it just a teaching culture? Then we have the intentional content. So teachers, do teachers curate videos? Do they create videos? Do they create other kinds of worksheets, workshops, uh, posters, or other materials to help students with the content? And then we have the professional educators. That's the last but not least uh, pillar of flipped learning. For flipped learning to work, we need professional educators. We need people who are able to collaborate with one another, who want to um, be curious and inquisitive, who want to find new answers, and who are always reflecting upon their own practice as teachers. So if we look at flipped learning and language learning, we will have a few, very few articles and very few works um, that we can use. For example, Brings Lockwood in 2014, uh, she came up with a book called Flip It, Strategies for the ESL Classroom. And in Flip It, um, Brinks Lockwood presents the case of a flip of flipping a university ESL writing course. So she uses the book Academic Writing for Graduate Students from Michigan University Press and um, she manages to show us how the lessons are different, you know, in a face-to-face -face or traditional environment and in a flipped environment. She uses the inverted Bloom's taxonomy proposed by Crothall and Anderson in 2001 and um, she departs from the fact that it's by flipping Bloom's taxonomy that we do our flip. Um, then we have Bar Ramazani, Marshall, Graney, and Sabie. They published an article in 2016 in the Teasel Journal where they um, make the case for flipped learning in Teasel as a need that emerges for us educators. So there is a shift from teacher's role as central figures in the classroom to becoming more like facilitators of learning, focusing on creating tasks to help students use language rather than uncovering the curriculum. So for us in language learning, it's not so much about the lectures because we don't have lectures anyway. You know, it's more about the generating spaces where students can produce language, they can use the language rather than, you know, just covering a bunch of structures or vocabulary topics, but generating spaces for students to use the language. Then Marshall in 2014 and in 2016 offers us two very important concepts. So the first one is the classroom becomes the center of collaborative activities and project-based language learning. So in flipped learning we can insert or use project-based learning very easily. And also uh, in a personal communication with her I heard the term creating fertile, fertile learning spaces which refers to this metaphor of planting. So we as teachers would be gardeners and our students, you know, would be the fertile spaces or the classroom could also be the fertile space uh, where we promote this learning and when we guarantee that our students are nurtured and they grow into proficient users of the language. Okay, that's all for now.